So the first lie that society tells you to sabotage your success, you are perfect just the way you are. Now, it's safe to say many of us have told that to somebody we love to comfort them. But between you and me, the truth, they need to get their shit together. I know for me personally, I try every month to break my life into multiple sections and I rate it based off of my own expectations. So how do I rate myself? Well, I've got seven areas that I measure. First up, let's talk about finances. Business finances, I'm gonna give myself a six out of 10. Personal finances, I'm gonna give myself a six out of 10. Next up, we've got centeredness. And this one is pretty big. It actually is broken into three parts. First up, we've got emotional. My emotional state, I'm gonna give myself an eight. I feel overall good. I'm taking the steps I want to this month to improve the entire year. Physical wise, I'm only gonna give myself a five out of 10. I'm taking steps in the right direction, but I do not feel I am even close to where I wanna be physically. And then I've got my spiritual status. So right now I'm gonna give myself a seven. I think that I could be doing more here. I definitely want to improve here in 2023. The next area that I measure is clarity. And this is a big one. I'm gonna give it right now a 7.5 out of 10. And this one, I'm definitely, I've taken some steps in the last two months to improve my direction, my bearing. Next up, we've got connectedness and I've actually got my highest score here with an 8.5. And I believe a lot of this is because I'm naturally inclined to be a, just a connected person. I enjoy talking and staying in touch with friends, my family. I feel that we've grown a lot closer in this area of my life. I'm winning. Next up, I've got contribution. This is, am I making a difference in the world? Right now, I'm giving myself an eight out of 10. I do feel that we're having impact with our Feed Ukraine charity, but I know that we can do more. And that's my goal is to get this up to a nine this year. And here, as you can see, we've got motivation at a 7.5. I'm really excited about mission fragrances, about all the projects I got planned this year. I think this one will be an eight here soon because as I start to free up time to focus in on the things that excite me. So as you can see, I am far from perfect. And I think that all of us, if we were to break it out, we can realize, hey, we have a lot that we still want to accomplish, a lot of things that are far from being perfect. The next life floating around out there, the dad bod is sexy. That is a bunch of bullshit. And even if to a small group of people, it is sexy, are you happy with that body? And I'm not saying you gotta have six pack abs. 20 pounds around the midsection, maybe not so bad, but 50 pounds plus, Guys, all of a sudden you're running into health issues. Now, as most of you guys know, there are two parts to getting back into shape. And the most important part is not going to the gym. I mean, don't get me wrong, the gym's important, but gents, you cannot outrun a bad diet. And this is why most men can't lose weight, they can't put on muscle because they don't understand that they need to change the food that they're putting into their bodies. Well, gentlemen, if you're looking for a simple way to transform your diet so you can transform your body, you need to check out today's sponsor, Factor. So, gents, if you haven't heard about Factor, you need to check them out. They make ready to eat meals that make meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. They've got a whole team of gourmet chefs that create each meal using only ingredients with integrity to help you feel your best all day long. And my favorite part, it doesn't matter what your diet needs are. Depending on your lifestyle, Factor has the meals to make eating healthy easy. And to show you gents how easy this is, boom, right here, I had six meals delivered right to my door. Now me, I'm trying to put on a little bit of muscle, so I went for the protein plus meals. And with the new baby, with so much going on, there's just not a way to make a quick lunch. So whenever I pop in, what I love about this is guys, you pop these in the microwave. Now, as you can see here, gents, I got the roasted garlic chicken with green beans and oh, wow, this was friggin' amazing. And gents, when you go over to their website, you're going to see all the options that you've got. If you want to go vegan, if you want to go vegetarian, if you're watching your calories, then check out the calorie smart. If you want keto, they've got you covered. So to get started, gents, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code RMRS60 to get 60% off your first factor box, a huge savings so that you can try factor and you can see guys how you can save time, how you can eat healthy, how you can start to improve your body. Again, gents, head over to factor75.com or click on the link below and use code RMRS60 to get 60% off your first factor box. The next lie that you need to stop believing because it's holding you back, money, it doesn't matter. Or even better, money is the root of all evil. Here's the deal, gents. Anybody that says money doesn't buy happiness, hasn't given enough away. Seriously, as somebody that grew up without money, I can tell you that having some money makes life so 
much easier. I mean, you're still going to have problems. When I look at all my problems, for the most part, I can divide them into two camps. There are money issues and then there are personal issues. Well, if you've got money, it's pretty simple. You can take care of the money issues. Now, the personal issues, yeah, as long as you're dealing with other human beings in your life, you're going to have those no matter how much money you have. But it's nice when you can focus your energy on those and work to develop the skills to be able to overcome them. All right, gents, so the next lie that men are being fed that's holding them back, that is to work hard and you will be rewarded. Now, let me be clear. I believe hard work is part of the equation, but it's not everything. No, on top of hard work, if you're working for somebody else, you need to develop skills that are going to make you a linchpin. Now, if you're not an engineer, you're not familiar with what a linchpin is, this is the one pin that you could remove and everything would fall down. If you are this in your company, you are essential. Guess what? You're not going anywhere. If you are a salesman, you're a rainmaker. If you are somebody that just simply knows some critical systems, that the company, yeah, if they're looking to get rid of you, you just have to bring up the skills that you've got and yeah. you're probably going to be okay. That being said, I know it's not always the case. Companies sometimes get rid of people that are essential to their detriment and that's why I always think you should be looking to work at a place that treats you best. Don't be afraid to move to a company or even move to a country. It's one of the reasons I love immigrants. They go and they find, hey, where am I going to be treated better with my skill set? And if you can't find a company that treats you the way you want to be treated, perhaps you should go start your own business. I know for me, when I looked at the stats of people that had built their own wealth, the vast majority of them were business owners. And to me, it was just okay. I'll play the odds here and I'll try to start up a business that can reward me and it will treat me the way I want to be treated. On top of that, an essential part of this equation is understanding personal finance. I recommend that you read as many finance books or listen to as many podcasts as it takes for it starting to sound redundant. I know a lot of you guys are complaining, Antonio, I watch your videos. You keep seeing the same things about style. Well, guess what? If you're at that point, you've pretty much heard the loop. And at that point, you need to be taking action. So, if you're reading finance books and you're like, hey, the majority of this stuff I already know, then it's a matter of actually just implementation. Now, this next one I know is going to rile some people up, but I don't think any of us are entitled, especially if you want to get ahead to a weekend of booze and television. That's a free country, at least here in the United States, and you can do whatever you want. But if that's what you do on your off time, then it's going to be hard for you, in my opinion, to get ahead. I know for me, one of the best choices I made in my mid twenties was simply getting rid of my television and spending my weekends on self development. Now, initially this was just books, but then it was taking odd jobs in areas that I found interesting. One particular job that was paying me 10 bucks an hour was simply to go into the back end of websites and adjust HTML code. I didn't know jack about websites. The guy trained me up and I was just spending, you know, eight to 10 hours a day going in and trying to fix the code on this ancient website. And this is back, what, 2003, 2004. That skill set and Dreamweaver led to me better understanding websites, not being scared of them, and eventually starting my first website in 2007. All I'm saying here is that all of us get 144 hours in a week. Yes, you've got to work 60 hours to make ends meet. That gives you 84 hours, of which 70 you're sleeping. So, that gives you 14 hours. What are you doing with that precious time? Are you developing skills that are going to make you more marketable, allow you to be able to charge more for your services, or are you just going to waste time in front of a screen drugged up? Not to sound like a conspiracy theorist here, but if you wanted to keep people in their place, historically, what did emperors do in Rome? They gave them bread, they gave them, you know, beer, and they showed them a whole bunch of games. I mean, is that the path you want just to be placated with the masses? The next lie that society is trying to push on you, that you need a college degree to be successful. And if you agree with this one, guys, smash that like button. Seriously, you don't need a college degree to be successful. There are so many rewarding careers out there, dirty jobs you can go out there and grab that are actually a lot more fulfilling than being stuck in an office. Now, I understand if you want to be an engineer, you want to be a lawyer, you want to be a doctor, you probably do need a degree, but there are so many professions that don't need it. The next slide that society is trying to push down your throat, just be a nice guy and things will work out. Now, in general, the idea of nice people, I mean, this sounds great, but when we say a nice guy, you got to understand the semantics, the meaning right now in society. You see, a nice guy is referring to somebody that is using 
his being nice, his being accommodating to others as a bargaining chip. Basically, nice guys are being nice because they want something. Oftentimes from a woman, they're expecting, hey, I'll be nice to her, therefore I will get sex. Gents, when it comes to sexual dynamics, being nice, yeah, it doesn't really get you anything. Now, you can be a good man, you can be a kind man from a position of strength. And what I would recommend, instead of trying to be a nice guy, be a respected man. Be a man that has a skill set, that has value, that can add something to the world, that can add something to his society, that can add something to his community. A respected man brings something to the table. He doesn't rely on charity. Maybe it's strength. Maybe you spend time in the gym. Maybe it's going to be raw intelligence. Maybe it's going to be a particular skill set that you have honed over time. Maybe it's going to be financial resources. Maybe a combination of all of those. What you want to do is you want to be somebody that actually others want to be around. When you're in a position of strength, that's when you can be kind, that's when you can be charitable, and this is something that others find attractive that they want to be around that person. Being nice just to get something? No, that's manipulation. The next lie being shoved down your throat is that life is going to get better after high school after college, after you get that job that starts paying you $100,000, after you have a family, after you have kids, it can be great, but there is no guarantee life is going to be better. And if you're waiting for the goodness to happen to you, you're going to be waiting a long time. Now, the seminal book on this subject is Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. He's got an amazing story. He was a psychiatrist sent to a Nazi concentration camp. And in a nutshell, what he talks about is it's our response to life that enables us to find meaning in it. So, if you're just waiting for happiness to come to you because of a situation, because of an achievement, because of where you're at in your life, that you've got a family now around you, guys, you're, you're sorely mistaken. You've got to go out there and build the happiness. You've got to build the situation, the relationships that are going to bring you this happiness that you so much want. Now, this next one, I know a lot of you guys are going to disagree with, especially the romantics out there, and that is there isn't a perfect person, a perfect somebody that we need to find out there. And I know love at first sight, actually the relationship with my wife. I met her and I knew and I told her, I'm like, within 24 hours, I pretty much had written her a letter telling her I'm going to marry her. Now, was I just trying to get into her pants? I don't know. You know, it worked out. Nowadays, I look at this, especially having kids, I realize, you know, there are tons of great people out there that they can form a relationship with. And I think when you free yourself from that burden of going out there and having to find the one and you realize there are actually probably tens of, if not hundreds of thousands of people that you could have a great relationship with, all of a sudden you realize your odds are a lot better and it's something that, you know, you want to start building that life with them. You want to find that person if you want to partner up. And that's probably another false lie that's being sold to us is not everyone needs to. I have friends that are perfectly happy in their 50s, 60s, in 70s, and they are single. Other people have decided not to have kids. Guys, this plan that society is pushing on us that all of us need to be alike, that is not true. Really, you need to just go out there and find and really dig in deep. Try to figure out what is going to make you happy. And of course, if you disagree with me, I want to hear from you guys down in the comments. So, what video to watch next? Well, let's talk about the men's mental health crisis. Seriously, this is something everyone's sweeping under the rug. This is a big deal. So many guys are dealing with mental health issues and these are the things you need to know what's going on with this. Guys, check this one out. It is a solid video.